YouTube is live. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to everybody in the webinar. And good morning to our friends from Brazil. The BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries is a parent organization which promotes commerce and industries in the BRICS nation. The chamber, founded in 2012 with the efforts of eminent professionals and entrepreneurs, is a not-for-profit, non-governmental organization. BRICS CCI is a registered body under the Society's Registration Act 1860, Government of India, and is impaneled with Niti Ayo, the highest policy-making body of the Government of India, and is recognized by the United Nations. The objective of BRICS CCI is to create an enabling support system. While BRICS nations will remain at the center of all activities, the Chamber has taken in its credo to reach out and enable entrepreneurs from other friendly and neighboring nations too. Today's webinar by BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries sets the focus towards emerging technologies, artificial intelligence for digital transformation of automobile and agricultural sectors by creating a platform for exchange of ideas and solutions on emerging trends, influencers and developers of these technologies, perspectives from current users and developers who have got value and have developed these technologies. The webinar's intent is to bring all the stakeholders on our platform to engage in the discussion to identify and present the huge potential the key technology has for prospective as well as current users. Now, I would like to welcome our Director General of BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries to please give his welcome remarks. Dr. Madhukar, sir, over to you. Sir, you are on mute. Sir, you are on mute. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Well, good evening, everybody. And good morning to those who are from Brazil in this uh, webinar. I extend a warm welcome to all the participants, particularly Mr. Asok Dalwal, Dalwai, who has agreed kindly to address all of us. He, he works on a mission which is doubling farmer's income. And that, that is what our farmers particularly need in this changing world. I have great pleasure in complimenting all of you who are attending this workshop, sorry, attending this workshop in, a, in, the, in this webinar organized by BRICS Chamber. And as you know, we are talking. We are going to talk, we are going to talk about a subject which is so relevant and topical today that most of our human activity is controlled by artificial intelligence. Many other things which are also associated with, you know, the modern, most modern technologies. It is the technology which only rules the world. I must say that the countries which are poor or rich or countries which are strong or weak, depend very largely on which one has cared for higher technology or better technology. It is the technology which makes you strong. Financially, also militarily, and also intellectually. So therefore, you know, we are, we are transiting from one kind of industrial economy to knowledge economy. And now we are also progressing further to an economy which is entirely based on technology. And technology has permeated and entered into all kinds of, all domains of life. Like, you know, take music, take sports, take any other item which is not considered part of technology or science domain, has now entered in such a way that today if a person who is performing in sports or, or, or a cultural item cannot do away with technology. Technology has entered everywhere. And technology has been pervasive, all pervasive. Whether you take it medicine, you take it education, you take it anything. So therefore, you know, the role of artificial intelligence is a 
demonstrated by a machine as opposed to the natural intelligence displayed by humans or animals. In the, in the short span of a few years, you know, we have uh, adopted artificial intelligence in a not normal way. When we open our mobile phone and we want to complete a sentence, we get the words coming up, uh, oozing out, and then we adopt the word which is most suitable. So this has come to come in our life. This is artificial intelligence. Similarly, you know, want to put, put a crop in a particular area, want to put up a crop in a particular area, which is where the, the, the land is not suitable for that kind of crop, then it will always, the machine will guide you as to which crop is suitable for this time or this, this climate and this uh, soil. So all these things are not going to, now going to dominate the world economic and, and, and uh, cultural scenario. So therefore, you know, we have to give value to this. The world is not going to be, uh, you know, uh, world is going to be richer only when we master this art. And we have many such participants here who are going to talk about the subject for experts in the line. Doctor, doc, not doctor, but very eminent person is Nitu Kishoreji, who is also a governing body member of Rich Jammer Commerce Industry, and is a very eminent person in the line of artificial intelligence and, and, and IT sector. So she will be the operator. I commend her for the role and also welcome our honorable uh, chief guest, Mr. Vishwas Tripathi, who will also, I'm sure, will bless us with few words of wisdom. Thank you very much and welcome to all of you. Thanks. Please take care everyone. Yeah. Thank you now, so much, over sir. To, over to you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Madhukar, sir, for your kind words. And now I would like to invite the chairman of RICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Mr. Vishwas Tripathi, to please share his welcome address with all of us. Tripathi, sir, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Madhukar. Thank you, Jaya. Um, thank you, all the participants from across the globe. Good morning and good evening to all the people so with the KFB. I welcome, I'm so happy to see today that a huge number of participants are there for this webinar on emerging technologies and artificial intelligence is a part of it but a very, very, very important part of it. So on a lighter note, I would like to say that why we call it artificial intelligence? This is going to be real intelligence because it is only enhancing human potential and we need human intervention all the time to make it a success. It is not like a, a artificial flower. It is something technology. We have devised the name artificial, but I will say it is a real intelligence which enhances the human brain power, human capabilities. But at the same time, this is IT sector. This is emerging technologies. Human intervention, we cannot do away with. And these are all our tools to enhance our capabilities and our efficiency, our um, intelligence, our um, deliverables. I would like to thank Ashok Dalaveji, a very eminent uh, IS officer who is heading, who is the chairman of Empowered Body, doubling farmers income, Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, Government of India. Our Dr. Sasit Pataji, chief guest, uh, Dr. Madhukar uh, said that I'm chief guest. No, I'm chairman of BRICS. I'm, uh, um, maybe he, uh, he just uh, missed it. I am uh, chairman of BRICS and our chief guest today was supposed to be our uh, Dr. Satsit Patraji, who is the uh, vice chairman of Raj Sabha, uh, member of parliament Raj Sabha from BJD and national spokesperson from Raj Sabha, <clears throat> the, one of the youngest uh, MPs from Odisha. Uh, he couldn't make it because of uh, Lok Sabha session going on. So he has sent his video recording 
for the benefit of all of us dr ashok dalwe ji really i will say that among the brics nations agriculture is one of the agriculture is one of the most potent sector i will say and he is handling uh, on behalf of government of <clears throat> india for doubling farmers income which has been the uh, which has been the uh, target of this government that we have to double the farmers income by 2022 uh, since this uh, covid uh, but we are working very hard on that sector also and we will uh, hear lot many things that what is happening in agriculture and artificial intelligence in india automobile sector it is said that many industrial revolutions were led by art- automobile sector only and i must tell you artificial intelligence is going to do a great revolution in this sector in times to come i see on the panel so many eminent speakers they are all holding leadership positions in their companies in their organizations and i am sure that we will all be richer from this webinar at the end of the webinar and i would like my panelists to add this one thing that when it came we all were very much worried that it will create huge unemployment which has not happened rather it has created huge employment for them for the people not the unemployment in the same way there is section of the people who say when all these artificial intelligence and emerging technologies like blockchain like 5g like uh, your uh, cyber security and all these things will come human intervention will reduce and people will be rendered jobless i hope that our panelists will with their intervention will again defy this, this logic the way it has been defied when it was introduced in the world and we at brics as dr madhuka has very rightly said that we have been supporting all these ventures all these uh, initiatives in a great way and after this webinar is over we will as a follow up for this we will uh, see to it and from our chamber we will support that how we can do now another webinar or interaction if physically is allowed with the companies who are interested to do uh, to use ai and do business with the companies who are participating here the participant the panelists so that is going to be the real thing when we enter into some we enable and facilitate some business deals some other commerce deals for our participants and i am sure that we will be having more of these webinars i will call it a series 1 uh, series 1 we can have and nitu is here smiling see we can have series 2 we can have series 3 we can have series 4 and brics will be at the forefront of making this emerging technologies richer supporting and especially ai today i would request all the participants and we have seen record number of registrations till uh, today i was informed by jay our ddg that we have all we have record number of registrations today and so many participants are there i congratulate and thank all of them and i will appreciate that from this after this webinar they come forward and take advantage of the experience and expertise of our panelists thank you very much over to uh, nitu <clears> or <throat> jaya thank you so much sir for your kind and encouraging words to all of us uh before we uh, introduce our chief guest i just want to share a little bit about our chief guest dr sasmit patra who is the mp rat sabha for orissa since 2019 he is the member of parliament of india representing orissa in rat sabha the upper house and appointed as chief whip of biju datnayak party he is also the vice chairman of rat sabha and currently the spokesperson for the same he is the youngest rat sabha mp from orissa and became the first orissa mp to chair rat sabha after 20 years he was dean of savior amelon business school the first indo french business school in india it's also member of parliamentary departmental standing committee on human resources development which covers the ministry of hrd women and child development and sports and youth affairs due to his official engagement he has not been able to join the webinar in person so he has been kind enough to send a recorded message for all of us i'll request sharbani to please play the message
The volume is not there, Sharvani. There's no volume. Yeah. Are your earphones on, Charvani? We cannot hear anything. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a warm good evening to all of you. Namaskar. I thank the BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industry for inviting me to this wonderful webinar, which is on transforming technologies that can be used for the use of automobiles and agricultural sector. We understand that artificial intelligence has gone on to become one of the key areas of development for our nation. Why do I say as a nation? It's because artificial intelligence not only is this the present, but is also the future going forward. The question is, how can we use this artificial intelligence? How can it make it more effective? And therefore, this webinar today, which will deal with artificial intelligence as a tool, which will provide digital transformation to agriculture and transformation to automobile sector is extremely crucial. Let me, though I'm not a technology person, and there are technology uh, professionals and experts who are there this uh, evening with us on this live webinar, and they are a galaxy of experts. I saw the list, the panelists, and their expertise is so vast that listening to them, we'll all be encouraged and we'll all be motivated and more well aware about how things are going to take place in the future using artificial intelligence. In my limited scope of understanding and not being a scientist or a professional of technology, I understand that agriculture has a tremendous requirement for artificial intelligence. Now, what is the amount of produce? When is the produce ready? Is it ripe? Is it not ripe? What is the right time of ripeness? Can anyone predict? Artificial intelligence can. Can we find out the soil fertility and track it back 10 years back and 10 years forward to project how it can be better utilized. Seeds, the quality of seeds, the progression of seeds, the kind of soil architecture, the kind of uh, weather forecasting, the kind of uh, various technologies that would help a farmer's life better in its agricultural produce. I think there are many areas of agriculture that can be better served by using artificial intelligence. I'll let the experts talk on more on artificial intelligence, and I'll try not to be the expert myself, which I'm not. The second is, of course, the area of automobiles. We have all heard about the autonomous driving or autonomous automotives, which would be in simple sense called as self-driving vehicles. Now, artificial intelligence has a huge scope there for self-driving vehicles. Now, these self-driving vehicles, along with energy efficient vehicles, are going to be the future. Vehicles that will use more new and renewable energy would be the future. How do we really work them out? What is the kind of impact that artificial intelligence would have is of enormous value. And I'm sure going forward, both automobile and agricultural sectors will have tremendous need for artificial intelligence and AI as a tool is going to be one of the defining cutting edge tools, not only for today and tomorrow, but for times to come. And as technology transforms, as we go through many more disruptions in technology coming forward and te disruptive technology being brought into the economy, we will find more and more opportunities for farmers 
for transporters, for the automobile sector, and for both these sectors, I thank BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industry for bringing forth these two sectors for discussion, which are important sectors considering the massiveness of the economy of India and the dependence of the economy of India, both on the agricultural sector and the automobile sector. I wish all of you the very best. And I thank once again, BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industry for inviting yeah, me on this live webinar. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries is extremely thankful to Dr. Sastra Patra to have taken time from his busy schedule and sent us this message on today's webinar. Now, moving on, I would like to introduce our esteemed guest of honor for today, Mr. Ashok Dalwai, who is the Chairman Empowered Body, Doubling Farmers Income, Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, Government of India. So, Mr. Ashok Dalwai, sir, over to you. Please share your remarks with us. You're on mute, sir. Yes. One minute. Okay. So thank you very much, Madam Jaya, for inviting me uh, this evening in India. Good morning, Team Brazil, and good evening, Team India. It was my pleasure to be along with the chair, the Director General, Dr. BBL Madhuka. Mr. Vishwas Tripathi, the chairman, Dr. Sasmit Patra, the honorable member of parliament, all the co-panelists and other participants in this very well-organized and very timely and appropriate webinar on a very critical topic relating to artificial intelligence. We're talking about digital technology and digital technology-led transformation in the domains of automobile and agriculture. I will largely dwell upon agriculture sector and leave it to co-panelists who have greater domain expertise on automobile to talk about that. And that would be appropriate given the time constraints. Brazil and India are both emerging economies. Both share very common cultural ties. We both are committed to the welfare of our people. And there's a great understanding. So obviously, the growth of industry, growth of agriculture, the infrastructure in both the countries can be a common vision. And that implies that we should be also sharing technology platforms. Coming down to agriculture in India, Indian agriculture has done very well over the last 70 years. But the downside of this growth has been blind approach to production and indiscreet use of resources. And these two in result have left the country food surplus but nutrition deficient which implies that the consumers have not been taken adequately care of. It has left the farmers unhealthy in terms of the incomes they derive because we have been blind to the market forces. As I said, production has been blind. It has not been market-centric or market-led. And then the production technology has been anyhow approach, which means that we did not care much for the ecological implications of that. So today, India's agriculture is at an inflection point. It is today challenged by the climate change implications. It is challenged by the demands of the farmers for higher incomes and more productive employment opportunities within the agriculture sector. It is left the consumers demanding for more of proteins and minerals and vitamins. And the ecology is simultaneously crying for an eco-friendly approach. So what we now focus in agriculture as a principal approach is to have a climate-smart agriculture, market-smart production system, 
and eco-friendly approach to production so that we remain sustainable. If we need to do this, then naturally we need to have science-based and data-driven approach to practice of agriculture. When we talk about science-based and data-driven, what comes to mind naturally is the digital technology. India at both government level as well as at the society level today is committed to adoption of technology in all sectors of the economy and the society. And therefore we have what is called a national electronic commitment. And this has nine pillars of which agriculture is one of the main pillars. So that's called NEGPA, that we are promoting technology, digital technology within the agriculture domain. And we are committed to that in the future. When you talk about digital technology, automatically artificial intelligence and machine learning occupy the center stage. It would be therefore appropriate for us to understand that what do you mean by artificial intelligence and machine learning within the domain of agriculture as also elsewhere. As commonly understood, artificial intelligence is that aspect of the machines which enables the machines to take smart decisions. And machine learning is one component of this artificial intelligence that helps these machines to learn automatically based on data analytics, even when they are not programmed accordingly. So without the programmed approach, the machine learning helps in automatic learning and therefore it reduces the human intervention. So reduced human intervention and more uniform application of technology will help in achieving the resource use efficiency, which is so much required in our country. It helps in taking smart decisions relating to pre-production, production and post-production, which are the three important segments of agriculture. So in, in what way can we adopt the artificial intelligence is the question. Can artificial intelligence be deployed independent of everything else? Certainly not. So we need to look at the package of the bouquet of interventions that will constitute the ecosystem of this. Hence, we need along with that artificial intelligence, of course, a machine learning. We need the data and data analytics. Unless we have these four supported, of course, by other technologies, other emerging technologies like sensors, internet of things, the web of things, and further supported by the satellite data, the drone-led the data, and also the field data, will not be able to complete this entire cafeteria of technological interventions called digital technology. And we are committed to all of these things. So today, we must understand that artificial intelligence, which makes use of data and data analytics, and then deploy sensors at the appropriate places, is able to carry out data analytics in such a manner that the mass of data that is available in different places is able to convey a particular meaning, a particular trend. So in agriculture, what we are now concerned today is that the data that is generated at different levels, we have mass of data generated at the federal level, at the state level, at the district level, and also at the private sector level. Unless we're able to build what is called as cross database intelligence through hosting of a standardized data, will not be able to analyze it and interpret it in the way that we want to and the way it can be adopted in agriculture. So the first focus today in India is to build what is called an agriculture stack that is around the farmer's database. We have 120 million farm households in our country and different kinds of data relating to pre-production, relating to production and post-production are all generated. Let's say the, at the pre-production level, the data, for example, relating to weather forecasting, the data 
relating to land statistics, the data relating to the soil characterization. Within the production segment, the data relating to the water status, the crop coverage, the crop productivity, the nature of use of fertilizers, the nature of use of water, the irrigation status, data relating to all this is also generated. And as far as post-production is concerned, data vis-a-vis -vis the prices, the demand, and the trends. So the long-term trends are equally important. So all these data today, though available, it is available in silos. So what we are interested today is bring that all around the farmer. So the farmer's database and each farmer linked to different data across the country will be able to help us to make a decision and that decision support system based on this big data and big data analytics is what the current, uh, current focus is and that is the uh, future. So let's also understand as to how we have moved and what we're trying to do. Artificial intelligence supported by the algorithms help us at all the three stages. Since we are interested in income approach to agriculture, and that has been quantified as doubling of farmers' income by 2022, vis-a-vis -vis the year 2015-16. That means within a short period of seven years, we have now adopted a new strategy as to what is called income-led approach. The world over, we all know what's called green revolution, which has got lots of focus on productivity-led production. But when you talk of income-led approach, that means we're talking of converting agriculture into an enterprise and the farmers as entrepreneurs. If they become entrepreneurs and agriculture sector becomes enterprise, then naturally profit becomes a driving force. If profit has to be earned, then we need to ensure that we are helping the farmer with the real-time data and real-time information at every single stage of the agriculture value chain from the pre-production to the production to the post-production. Hence, the artificial intelligence is now being deployed in the pre-production stage in forecasting weather. And the weather forecasting can be both short-term, medium-term, as also long-term. When we have this kind of location-specific weather forecasting, the farmers are able to take an appropriate decision as to what kind of crop and agriculture production system they should be adopting in sync with agroecology. Second, particularly agriculture and more particularly within the rain-fed systems, the agriculture is highly vulnerable. Today, under the context of climate change, where climate change is not reduction of the quantum of precipitation of water rainfall, but it is a variability that matters and makes agriculture that much more vulnerable, the risk coverage both of crops and livestock assumes great importance. So artificial intelligence that will help the policymakers, the insurance companies, reinsurance companies, and the farmers themselves to decide on what should be the premium, what kind of risk coverage can be taken up, the data analytics and forecasting systems become that much more important. In the risk coverage, for example, under the crop insurance, we are now combining the Space, the, the space data, the space gener the satellite generated data with the field data to rationalize the number of crop cutting experiments. In the absence of satellite generated data, we may have to do at least 1.1 million number of crop cutting experiments, which is very costly and also takes a lot of time. But when we are able to use the satellite data, then we are able to rationalize those things and reduce the number of crop cutting experiments drastically to around 100,000. So this is one concrete example of how the artificial intelligence helps. For want of day time, I will not go into all the details, but I can only tell you so much. The artificial intelligence today is useful within the agriculture sector in testing of soils, in testing of water, in irrigation management, in livestock management, against theft, again, to maintain their health, to monitor the health, in the cold storages, in the dry storages, in the reefer vans, in the post-production stage, in predicting demand and prices, in ensuring quality, connecting the farm gates with the, uh, with the markets. The COVID time, for example, has shown us that it is possible for people not to move out and still get connected to the markets. So I think in, in summary, I must tell you 
that what does artificial intelligence do? It simply helps the poor farmers. It helps the poor people in the countries who are deprived of infrastructure because artificial intelligence based on data means that we are graduating from physical movement to analog movement, from analogous movement to the digital technology movement. So when physically we are constrained because of absence of roads, absence of rail connectivity, air connectivity, or everything is there, but something like COVID tells us not to move out. The only option is to move the data. And how does data move? The data moves through all these technology platforms. And that's how where this emerging technology, including the bandwidth, the fiber network, the satellite data, remote sensing, proximate sensing, sensors, all these things come into way. So in irrigation, let, I'll just give one example of irrigation. Today, Indian farmers are used to what you call flood system of irrigation. That means you just leave the water because electricity is not consistent. Sometimes electricity comes at nighttime. The farmers can't wait on the farms at nighttime. They switch on their motors and are home. When the electricity comes, the water is being pumped out connect continuously. Water is being wasted, electricity is being wasted. But when we have sensor controlled actuators, which can actually regulate the gates of the, the, the canal system, then the water is left when wanted and it is closed when it is wanted to be closed just because the farmer has got a mobile application and he's able to operate from his home. So like, likewise in livestock management, or in cold storages, in the absence of sensor-based technology, each time we want to control the temperature or the humidity, we need to keep opening and shutting the doors, which causes loss of energy. Whereas if you have a sensor-based technology, sitting outside, operating on your mobile or a desktop or a laptop, you are able to regulate the temperatures. So I think artificial intelligence has, some, has got that capacity to give us that decision support system such that we use the most minimal of resources, water, soil, fertilizers, pesticides. It helps us to understand the future prices and demands and therefore connect back to the farm, farms in such a way that we grow what the market wants. It helps us to predict the pests and diseases. It helps us to forecast what, may, what is the demand outside the country. In every single way it can help, so artificial intelligence is something that we have to certainly adopt combined with, of course, other emerging technologies. But before I close, I must tell you that in countries which are emerging, there is always a digital divide. There are a large number of people who may not have access to smartphones. They may not be having access to internet. And therefore, we need to have a policy whereby we are able to create common service centers and enable the farmers and the landless people to actually access these common service centers and then uh, host and become part of the digital technology movement. We also simultaneously require find the computer literacy of these people so that they are not scared of using technology. Not only they, but everybody else. The last thing that I would like to say, the fear that emerging technologies are disruptors in the sense that not only positive disruptors that they certainly are, but they also could be negative disruptors is something that we need to be wary about. As the technology movement has shown over the last 30 years in particular, each technological progress has actually created new jobs, new income levels and brought greater welfare or secular coverage of all sections of the society. So artificial intelligence, Machine learning, sensors, drones, all these things have the possibility uh, uh, of disrupting positively also in the context of creating new jobs. Only thing is the nature of jobs will change. Instead of working on the shop floors, they will be working within the air conditioned rooms on their laptops or on their mobiles. So I think we need not be really scared of that. But what is very important for both our countries is to ensure that would train our people, literate our people, educate our people so that the poorest man, the illiterate man actually become part of the process. I think that's where the policy has to design. So I, I'll close by saying that likewise in the automobile sector, the only thing that I can think of is that so far it is the manufacturers of engines who have been ruling the roost. It is they who are considered as the masters of the automobile. 
in times to come, it will be the service providers, it will be the technology providers, because it's going to be automated, who will automate the whole process from designing, manufacturing, value chain, supply chain, and also the service uh, domain. So everywhere we can, we, we, a time has come which progress cannot be stopped. We need to pro prepare ourselves. So I'll stop here and I would thank you very much for the time given to me and sorry that it took an extra time, but uh, let both of our countries work together and I'm, I'm grateful to BRICS for having brought us together. Thank you very much and Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir, for that very, very insightful sharing with all of us. And at this point, I must share that Dr. Dalwai's 14 volume report on doubling farmer's income has been recognized globally as a first evidence-based and comprehensive strategy. So we have a lot to interact with you, sir, and for you to guide and advise us at the chamber and all our partners and panelists who are with us today. Thank you so much, sir. So we'll request you to please stay with us as we introduce the rest of our panelists and we start uh, the rest of the panel discussion. So please stay with us, uh, Ashokan sir. Thank you so much. Moving yes, on, I would like to, thank you, sir. Moving on, I would like to introduce Ms. Nitu Kishore, ma'am, who is our moderator for today. Nitu Kishore, ma'am, is our IT head and governing body member of BRIC CCI. Also, Ms. Nitu Kishore, ma'am, has got IT expertise of over 25 years working in corporates like TCS, Infosys, and General Electric before she moved to entrepreneurial ventures. She is currently the director in Global Vision Consultancy Private Limited and heads IT and technology in BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Welcome, Neetu Ma'am. Moving on, we'd like to introduce the rest of our panelists who are with us here today. To begin with, we have Colonel Interjeet Singh, Chief Cyber Officer, Vara Technologies, India. Ms. Renata Limiro, Data Intelligence Supervisor, Implanta IT Solutions from Brazil. Ms. Arsira Trumpati, Head of Business Development, Agritask Israel. Mr. Nishan Mishra, co-founder and CTO in Labs from India. We also have with us today, Professor Dr. Regain Relva Romani, who is the Head of Research and General Coordinator at Smart Campus, Faisens, Brazil. Also, we have with us today, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Rana, who is a Chief Business Officer, Digital Initiatives, SLCM Group from India. Welcome, Mr. Rakesh. We also have Ms. Michelle Spector, co-founder, IP Gallery from Israel. This evening, we are also joined by another esteemed panelist, Mr. Umang Shukla, who is the co-founder of Adjustify from India, and Mr. Expedito Belmont, who is the CEO of Drive On from Brazil. Last but not the least, we have Mr. Kostub Donde, who is the CEO and co-founder of Auto Next Automation India. We welcome all our esteemed panelists and look forward to a very, very exciting, insightful and encouraging and depth, full, full of depth discussion. Now, I would like to request Ms. Neetu Kishore, ma'am, to please take over and take forward the today's webinars proceedings ahead. Neetu, ma'am, over to you. Okay, so uh, welcome to all of you. Good morning and good evening, whichever part of the world you are in and joining as either as panelists or as uh, attendant audience participants. Uh, the format that I thought I'll just brief you about is uh, we have five minutes for all the speakers for their keynotes. And at the end of it, we will have an open Q&A session. So it would be more like a moderated Q&A session where I would ask the questions. And if there are any inputs or thoughts that panelists would want to share, uh, please feel free to ask uh, during that session. And to the audience, I would like to request if there's any question, uh, please put it on the chat box. Jaya will coordinate for such questions. She'll be sending me the questions. And as time permits, we would try to address as many questions as we can from the audience side. So with that, uh, let's get started with our first speaker. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Ashok Dalwai, sir, you have already given a very good uh, insight into the entire uh, agriculture space that India is getting into. I would definitely have a question for you when we have the Q&A session. Uh, in the meantime, let's first get started with our keynote speakers. I would like to invite uh, Colonel Indrajit Singh, 
uh, for his keynotes. So over to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, thank you everyone and BRICS CCI for having me here. It's a really a pleasure to be a uh, part of uh, the webinar today and talking on a very important topic of AI in automotive and agriculture. To give you a perspective of you know, uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Ashok Dalvi had brought out about the AI in agriculture, I would like to you know, bring about that while we talk of the AI, there are lots of enabling technologies which are you know, actually making the AI happen. Whether it's your 5G, robotics, blockchain, IoT, uh, AR, VR, 3D printing, cloud, you know, all those things are going to be the part and parcel of the AI, what we talk of. And while we talk of the AI, it's going to be like, uh, it's not happening right now. It's uh, between one and two years, something is going to happen. Two to five years, what we're going to see. Five, 10 years, what we're going to see. And beyond 10 years, what we're going to see. But the common denominator is, you know, is all about innovative new products and services, what we are looking in at. We are working on the personalization of your customer experiences, transform the revenue streams, whether it's your automotive or your agriculture, optimize your value chains, reimagine your workforce. And I resonate the same point because it's going to be reskilling everything. And you're going to have a different set of kind of you know trust, privacy, and security. So, you know, these are the common things, whether you take it agriculture, whether you talk of automotive, whether you talk of you know, spl supply chain or a healthcare, we're all going to be talking of these value chain things which are there. And what we are ask asking for, you know, it's all about your connected products, your service innovations, your connected platforms. That is what is the power of the AI, what we're going to have. And like we always say, you know, data is the new oil, data is the new diamond, the people or the country which has the data is going to be supreme. And that's going to be ruling the world altogether. And a and, uh, country like India, where we have, and Brazil, where we have enormous amount of data. We are talking of you know, customer experiences, that's called the CX. We talk of the hyper-personalization when we come to the automotive sector itself, right? And it's all about the data monetization, right? Talking of the product as a service, even in the agriculture part as a product as a service, right? We come as an outcome-based pricing we're going to have in the case of agriculture, whether you talk of you know, automotive. We are talking of the real-time visibility and that's what all the, the dignitaries have you know, brought it out. It's all about real-time visibility, real-time knowledge about what's really happening. While we talk of you know, the analytics part of it, and that's what we have been talking of all these years about data analytics. Here, we're going to be talking of the predictive analytics, we're talking of prescriptive analytics, we're talking of the you know, cognitive intelligence altogether. And that's going to bring in the automation aspect of it. This definitely will increase your workforce productivity. You're going to have your work, virtual workforce, which are going to be there. And the ecosystem altogether is going to change. And that is what we are actually anticipating in the autonomous vehicles. We are talking of the cognitive computing uh, in your vehicle itself so that you know the intelligence is being pushed away from your data centers right to your end product and that is is the edge computing all about right and the deep enforcement learning the the deep learning algorithms what we talk of your conversational user uh, interfaces which are there those are very important when we talk of any of the application of you know the ai so net net, what we're going to have is we're going to have a phenomenal you know, platforms in times to come. We're going to have so much of AI altogether with the, uh, the augmented reality there, the uh, mobile robots there, the chatbots there, the IoT platforms there, your connected cars are going to be a platform itself. That is the power of the AI, which is going to be. But one thing I want to really tell about, do I do also come from the cybersecurity background and, and work a lot of AI in cybersec. The future of AI in cybersecurity is, is AI versus AI. That's the future where 
a computer is going to fight against a computer. It's not going to be a human against a computer or a malware code. That is what we are going to see in times to come. And that is a huge you know, potential altogether. So I'll stop here because I, I know there are so many panelists who are there in line. So I'll thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. That was really insightful. In fact, in, on a lighter note, I would like to connect uh, uh, with what uh, Mr. Tripathi said about uh, why do we call it artificial intelligence and what you brought up saying that too much of AI is going to be there in future. Uh, so I was just thinking while you were saying uh, the different areas that we will be getting into with AI, uh, it seemed like uh, as long as human is designing and devising all these technologies, it will be known as artificial. The moment the technology starts devising human and starts ruling our mind and brain, it's going to become real. So I think that's what the future is going to be about, right. that everything will be governed by the technology, what we do, what we say, everything. Unless you get an approval from the technology, I don't think so anybody's going to talk also about it. So that was very interesting. Thank you, sir. So moving on to our next speaker from Brazil, Ms. Renata, over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs of, Ita of Brazil, Itamaraty, for the invite and also the BRICS CCI team for having us here today. Uh, well, uh, as it was said, I'm Renata Limiro, I'm Data Intelligence Supervisor at Implanta, and I'm here to talk about the use of artificial intelligence applied to agribusiness. Implanta is a data intelligence startup. And we have a team of 30 motivated co-workers focused on our mission of integrate the agents of the agents in the production chain. When an industry is not integrated with your input distributor and the farmer operator, problems can occur, such as out of stocks or stock outs, with, which is the lack of products for the farmer operator assortment problems when the producer does not find all the necessary products available to buy in that specific season. The lack of efficient information at the right time can also lead to extended logistics costs and wrong prices with lower profit margins. All these problems can lead to sale loss and reduced marketing share. Implanta works by integrating the agents in the production chain, enabling the control of items with traceability uh, from the production to the consumption, ensuring more sales, profit margins, and market growth. We do this using a platform uh, in a software as service model. Our tools have user-friendly screens customizable according to the demand of our clients. And that's where artificial intelligence stands out. We collect data and generate insights using algorithms for, um, for, uh, for example, organize the log logistics purchases and sales of grains and seeds, uh, demand forecast for, pro for better production planning and storage of products in the production chain. In general ways, Implanta is our startup that extracts data automatically, processes them using artificial intelligence methods uh, like neural networks, predictions, and advanced analytics, uh, and share valid information. When it comes to sharing, we know that some artificial intelligence are complex to understand. So we prefer to simplify thinking in users and decision-making. We do all of this completely remote and 100% in the cloud, which gives us flexibility. This way, Implanta operates in several countries in Latin America from Brazil through automated process. Um, so our artificial intelligence solutions are incorporated into agribusiness. We've already achieved multinational clients using our artificial intelligence solutions for agribusiness which I would like to highlight, Bungie, BASF, Corteva, and Sumitomo Chemical. But we also already attend industry in other segments uh, with our solutions. 
um, our out outputs in general, uh, they are assertive demand forecast, improvement in inventory management in the production chain, optimized logistics, and sell more and better to achieve market share gains. Um, that's it in general ways and um, reliable data, either you have it or not. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Renata. Thank you so much for sharing the process. Yes, I do have a follow-up question on this. Once we open up the Q&A session, uh, we'll go ahead with it. Uh, let me invite Ms. Arsira from Israel uh, to share her uh, insights into uh, the space of AI in the industry. And uh, welcome you, ma'am. Please, over to you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Uh, Kishore, and I'm sure I pronounced uh, your name wrong. Uh, hi, uh, first of all, thank you very much for Briggs and for all the other panelists and the audience for, for getting us to be here. Uh, today, I speak on behalf of Agritax, which is an Israeli company in the software as a service model. We provide agronomic intelligence platform. So what we mean by that? We enable clients and stakeholders to collect and make use of data. Uh, the reason we exist is because data in agriculture is very complex and very multifaceted. You have weather, you have soil, you have crop characteristics, you have pests and disease, and each one of them, as the practitioners will know, it breaks down into a lot of categories on its own. Uh, if I take weather, you have rainfall, humidity, solar radiation, etc., etc. So I likewise, you know, all kinds of nutrients, organic matters and things like that. Then on top of all these agronomic and environmental data, you also have operational data, labor, machinery, uh, materials and resources used in the fields. So to make sense of all these together require tremendous uh, computing powers, uh, which I guess traditionally is always been done by implicit or tacit knowledge in the growers head. But today I think we have reached a point where we have the necessary infrastructure, uh, at least on the global level to harness all of these together and make sense of them collectively. So I am very optimistic. Um, Agritax itself works in 35 countries around the world. We work with multinational clients, uh, typically in the YU chain segments, uh, such as Starbucks, Nestle, Heineken, General Mills, etc. on the one hand. And on the other hand, we also work with the financial service sector that provides financial products for the agricultural businesses and growers, such as uh, Mafre or SCORE or Zurich, uh, et cetera. So we work with a, a broad range of clients. So from this end, uh, we would say data, uh, from the data perspective, uh, even though we, the subject of today is artificial intelligence, um, actually I'm here a little bit to demystify it in a sense that I believe that today the biggest bottleneck is not exactly the science of uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning. It is simply to collect that data and make it usable. This point, I believe, is touched upon also by uh, Mr. Ashok Dawai, and apologies for misspelling your name again, but I think the key is really about whether or not data is there in the first place. And in agriculture, especially in the smallholder context, there are many cases where there can be no data at all, yes? And if they are, then they are in different separate segments. They are not uh, collected in the same standards. They are not in the same structure, making it very, very difficult to integrate and make them uh, usable on a collective basis. I would even say this is probably the number one challenge today in the field of agriculture. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, I think there are lots of hypes and a lot of buzzwords that are being used. And I think while many of them are, you know, legit on its their own, I think that there are many, uh, I think some of the good ones that we see tend to have some <clears throat> specialist 
focused areas or crops that they're focused on. Um, to do well, I believe that artificial intelligence is not a trivial thing. You need a focus uh, to collect and have data in a good way. You need to focus on that. You need to continuously improve, learn one season after another to continue to be relevant and reliable. And this is partly because I think, again, as one of the points raised previously, things change all the time. Climate changes, um, practices in the fields change, the availability of chemicals and fertilizers or irrigation methods that are used in the field change. So you constantly need to have some sort of ground truthing data to worry that and examine that whatever you assume that your models are working correctly are being done properly. So I think these pipelines have to be there. I think one of the, the points that I would not want the audience to leave, AI is not some sort of magic, right? It's not some sort of science that we pack and play and then give answers to various people right away immediately. I think that's not the case at all. It's actually a science where it requires discipline to constantly learn and collect and improve over time. Um, so with that in mind, I'll, I'll close my, my portion at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Risa. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll uh, move on to our next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Mishra. Uh, I would like to invite you for your key keynotes uh, for today. Thank you, Neetu ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Brick CCI, for inviting Intel Labs to this session. And thanks a lot to the panelists who are speaking about the AI for automotive and the agricultural sector. Uh, I'm Nishant, I'm a CTO and co-founder of Intello Labs and Intello Labs is an AI-based precision agri-tech company. We are based out of Gurgaon, India and we work on the post-harvest quality assessment of fresh supply chains. So post-harvest means once the fruits or the vegetables are plugged from the field, right from that point till it reaches the hand of the consumers, that is our area of focus. And for that, we have created multiple products, right from a mobile application where you can click the uh, snapshot of a crate of tomatoes or a box of strawberries. It will give you the quality results on the basis of defect size and color. Uh, apart from mobile phone applications, we have sorting machines and weighing packing machines which leverage AI end to end to ensure that you can segregate good items from the bad items using sorting machinery uh, on the basis of defect size and color. And the reason uh, Intel Labs started four and a half years back was that uh, we, we went to a lot of uh, uh, remote areas in, the, uh, in India and we saw that a lot of times farmers were able to get the produce out of the field on time, but are they getting the right prices and are they getting the right market? So what we saw was that generally farmers will go to their nearby market mondays and their mostly brokers are there who will auction their materials at, and at times they really get good prices, but most of the time they can get prices because of the broker lobby or there are not much uh, buyers in that particular specific monday. So because of that, uh, we have started multiple uh, products which users can use at their farm or they can come to our collection centers where they can uh, get the quality checked of their produce and then they can either put it on our auctions or they can take it through the uh, Monday route again. What we see in artificial intelligence for agriculture is very similar to the uh, panelists who were just speaking before me. We see that the data is going to be a key challenge for ensuring that you always get the best models because it is a continuous learning process and every fruit, every vegetable can change its color, shape or size depending upon which region it is growing and on which and which season it is growing in. Like for example, apples in India will be very different from apples in Indonesia or in the US. So it's a continuous learning uh, cycle for getting the data collected properly as well as data getting annotated properly. And then accordingly, it's a continuous learning process for at least one to two years so that you can ensure that you get all the defects, all the colors of the produce for 
all the four seasons in that particular year uh, depending upon different states in various countries be it brazil be it india be it indonesia or uh, the us there are different effects which only get generated at specific states or specific areas of respective countries and it is important if you are uh, if you are working on uh, the agricultural sector to ensure that you collect that data or you use other communicative other ways of synthesizing your new data with help of uh, deep learning architectures such as uh, generative adversarial networks or uh, auto encoders to ensure that you can generate these new defects in a much faster way synthetically uh, that is what we are uh, working uh, currently and leveraging uh, data from various uh, governments as well as various agricultural mandis and we see that ai is going to be a boon uh, be it the automotive sector or the agricultural sector and we are very thrilled to ensure that we become a part of this ecosystem and we want to help uh, the farmers as well as the uh, want to ensure that whenever two parties meet who are buying and selling the fresh produce items quality will be the mo- key mo- most key-, key criteria and they both can come on to a deciding factor of the price on the basis of this machine learning and ai based models because it is very hard for both the parties to decide on the quality uh, depending upon whether you are a buyer or a seller and that is where uh, solutions like ours come in uh, but thanks a lot everyone for for your time uh, and i just wanted to end up with this note that ai is going to be a really big boon both for a, uh, for the agriculture as well as the automotive sector there will be challenges for sure but yes these will get improved over time depending upon the kind of neural networks which will be coming in from various uh, conferences and various great companies uh, like the uh, companies which have come here today so thanks a lot for your time and uh, happy to answer any questions thank you mr mishra uh, stay there with us yes you have brought in lots of uh, insights into uh, the region part of it especially how do you really customize your solution for different regions even if it is the same fruit or the same vegetable so that will be very interesting for a discussion uh, in the meantime uh, let's continue with our uh, keynotes from the panelists uh, we will move on to dr regain uh, ma'am uh, from brazil and uh, you i guess you have slides to share so he I has a slide regain has a slide so regain we can put it up for you or will uh, will you tell us when to put it up you are on mute again i think yes please you can put please Yes. Hello everybody. My name is Regiane. I'm from Brazil and I'd like to talk about what we are doing here in Brazil. We have some issues that we are developing here and we created the National IoT Plan. The National IoT Plan started 4 years ago and we are focused on industry, agrobusiness, agriculture, city is health tourism and now education but last year we launched the e digital strategy this is focused on infrastructure and the access to ICT for everybody we are focused on activities in research development and innovation we also are looking how we can implement a new kind of education uh because we needed to prepare the new issues for the market so we are working a lot in our e b a i that is our electronic artificial brazilian strategy and in this we are looking how we can impact the economy and how we proof that ethics is the base of the new society for this we are working hard in a data driven economy how we can connect the devices how we can create a new business model and how we can digitalize all the government and citizens uh, to prepare our economy for this we are also working now artificial intelligent strategy that is our ibia and we have two 
axis, a transverse axis and a vertical axis. In the transversal axis, we are studying about legislation, regulation, and ethical use of the data, AI governance, international aspects like education, how we can train in our workforce, how we can innovation, how we can create entrepreneurship students. And for all of those axes, we created an AI labs and educational centers. So we have one specific for health, another one for cities, another one for industry, rural, tourism, education, and cybersecurity. At the mobility and transport solution, we are studying a lot how AI, IoT can improve citizen experience, customer experience, how we can implement smart roads, telemarketing, uh, smart parking, intelligent logistic management, intelligent public transportation, and we are using a lot computer vision to understand and to detection the motorcycle in the vehicle blind spot using radar sensors with computer vision. We are using cameras on the highway to management the systems to detect, for example, smoke detection, contrary sense, vehicle count, and you can understand where are the big places that we need to, to control and to try to reduce the accidents. We also have a company here that is Embrapa Agricultural Informatics, and they are studying a lot how they can implement AI and new technologies for bioinformatics and computational biologic, scientific computing and automation, agroenvironmental modeling and gel technologies. And of course, we are using all the technology that are now uh, at our disposal, like cloud computing, Internet of Things, data integration, interoperability, database, big data, and knowledge. What I'd like to share with you is that we have the same, the same word, just like my friend said about the security and data privacy. And for this, we are working a lot in AI to Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation. And we are trying to create new startups with the academic and the government all working together. It's a new time. We will need to reinvent everything, not only in Brazil, but around the world. So I'd like to thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about what we are doing. I'm also working in a very big smart city process, and we are implementing everything inside the college and trying to understand how we can create new opportunity of business for the future. So it will be a pleasure to work with my friends from India in this new opportunity. Thank you so much for uh, the invite to be here with you today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, we would like to move on to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Rana, uh, for his keynotes. Uh, do we have slides for him? No. No, we don't have uh, uh, slides for Mr. Okay. Rakesh Kumar. Go ahead, Mr. Rakesh. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for the for the invitation to the SLCM group. And also thank you, Ms. Uh, Neetu and Ms. Jaya and entire BRICS CCI team for getting us together. Uh, taking a reference from uh, Mr. Dalwai and Mr. Tripathi, I would like to talk about the big agri challenge we face together as a global community and opportunities available in India. How our company SLCM group is trying to address some of these agri challenges through innovative technology solutions. As we know, the world is heading towards a serious food shortage problem. 
800 plus million people went food hungry in 2020 as per un report and by 2050 we will have more than 2 billion additional people globally to feed back here in india the opportunities are very big india india has the 10th last 10th largest arable land we have the largest livestock population which is approximately 31% of the global share we also have the third largest global fisheries output 45 of 65 soil types are present in india 20 agri climate regions are present here with us and india is also the largest producer of milk spices pulses tea cashew jute and maize and also uh, india is the second largest producer of wheat rice fruits sugar cane cottage uh, cotton and oil seeds however the challenge is that 86% of the farmers in india are small and marginal with land holdings of less than 2 hectares and with very limited access to technology inputs credit capital and market in india alone food wastage losses are more than 10% approximately 14 million ton amounting to uh, amounting to approximately usd 13 billion so we can feed 100 million people by saving post harvest storage losses our company slcm slcm group founded in 2009 is committed to modernize the india india's post harvest agriculture value chain with cutting edge technologies the slcm group offers technology driven warehousing services such as scientific storage for agriculture commodities fumigation testing and certification and funding waste storage receipts in india and myanmar our company currently has a network of over 7000 warehouses and has dispersed loans worth rupees 23.07 billion in last 3 years through its kisan dhan unit our firm offers its services to farmers processors traders and commodity exchanges by june 2021 SLCM had directly impacted the livelihoods of over 7.5 million people and positively touched the lives of another 38.23 million people. SLCM is a digitized enterprise and was the first company to introduce SAP-based ERP system in the agri warehousing space. The German software multinational SAP also recognized the project as a first of its kind in the world by warehousing player. SLCM Group our company has been effectively able to reduce post harvest losses from 10 to 10% to 0.5% by conducting more than 28 plus technology driven scientific processes an independent study by the FICI concluded that as SLCM's proprietary real time driven process management system agri reach has a remarkable impact on the quality of stored food grains if our solution agri reach is implemented across india this solution can have a positive impact to the tune of usd 13 million per annum lastly uh, but not the least in yet another bold step we will be initiating the deployment of ai ml based food quality and traceability app for agri commodities we are happy to share slcm group recently got the prestigious european grant for ai ml based quality app for agri commodities from actef and ssnup after going through a series of rigorous three tiered selection process the very prestigious european technical grant given to slcm is also the highest received for an indian entity in the agri warehousing companies category on ground utilization of the slcm mobile app a first of its kind made for india solution will tremendously help to improve the fidelity of the commodity quality checks with 90% accuracy and disseminate the instantly obtained qc results in a secure transparent manner thus reducing the turnaround time drastically we believe at slcm the mobile quality check app is a game changer with ongoing advancements and maturity it is expected to generate a better momentum to bring a large scale behavioral and institutional ch- change and influence the adoption of digital technology throughout the farming ecosystem i thank you and all the co panelists for your time thank you Thank you, Mr. Rana. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, insights in the agriculture space. And definitely, that's an interesting aspect you brought about deploying SAP in the environment. And we would really like to know how this could be used in the agriculture output maximization. Something that you could really share with the audience, and that would be very interesting. So we'll come back to our Q and A session, and that's when you can address this as well. So moving on to our next speaker, Mr. Moderator's uh, permission, I just want to uh, announce that uh, we are joined by our Vice Chairman of BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Mr. Ashok Singh. 
back to you ma'am welcome sir welcome ashok sir we we missed you in the beginning so we'll we'll have you at the end of the session good evening ma'am okay so moving on to our next speaker uh, ms mishal from israel uh, ma'am uh, we would like to invite you for your keynotes now there's a, a slide i think jaya uh, shavini can you please share the slide okay can you see the slides thank you i'm delighted to be here today i'm honored and i thank all the organizers and participants i'm michel specter co-founder of ip gallery and phd candidate at the technion and uh, cs rankings the leading metrics based ranking of the world's top computer science institutions ranked technion israel institute of technology number 1 in the field of ai in europe and 15th globally AI is being implemented rapidly just in every aspect of the automobile sector from manufacturing to driver assistance going beyond real time alerts um digital twins creating virtual models simulating the future and the present through autonomous vehicles the big promise of artificial intelligence is our driverless future IP gallery fuel powers the AI revolution in urban mobility and automotive related fields. Fully AV maneuvering traffic through road networks without requiring humans as supervisors or decision makers utilizing AI systems that generalize correctly from simulation data and complex training models to the real world. AV may increase comfort for their passengers, but more importantly, they provide new mobility opportunities for groups of people that have been excluded from participation in public life due to mobility restrictions. By giving AV the capacity to learn from collaborative experiences, AI-powered self-driving technology promises to help prevent human error. to prevent human error and make roads safer as you can see most of the investments in the field from october 2020 are in autonomous vehicles and electrification when it comes to self driving cars the future was supposed to be now in 2015 the guardian predicted that in 2020 you will be a permanent back seat driver business insider claimed in 2016 that 10 million self-driving cars will be on the roads by 2020. Those declarations were accompanied by announcements from both the legacy and new OEMs. Elon Musk forecast that Tesla would do it by 2018 and then when it failed by 2020. In the age of AI advances, self-driving cars turned out to be harder than people expected. Those advances drove the optimistic predictions for self driving cars in the 2010s because there was computer vision object recognition and game planning currently implementations mainly focus on a single vehicle detecting objects in its geofence zone so much of the problem is the need for lots of training data The problem is much more complex than expected since AI systems must take into consideration not just objects within line of sight but also various out of line of sight out of range and out of awareness situations in a real and unpredicted transport system. AI has the potential to transform the automotive industry and history proves however that new technologies thrive under new paradigms. The new technologies first implementations are often far from the real potential they would bring in the long run. The good news is that in the automotive sector these AI paradigms are already evolving combining computer science, neuroscience and psychology.
When using AI, there is a need for, to have long-term vision, aim to optimize and transform. If time permits, I will show a short video, very short video. Yes. No? Can't hear. Uh, Ma'am, you are on mute. Can we do the video in the end, Michelle, please? Okay. Thank so, you. Um, potentially next generations won't understand the meanings of phrases like, um, I can't text now because I'm driving, can't find where I parked my car, had a car accident, or I'm late because I'm stuck in a cab in traffic. Since their present will be dominated by autonomous vehicles, taxi drones, and safer roads powered by AI. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. And time permitting, we will come back to the video. And also, we have it in our records to be able to share it with people who are more interested uh, in IP galleries solutions. Thank you so much. OK. Thank you, Michelle. That was really interesting. And yes, there are two aspects of it. One is fully automated and the second is the safety uh, aspect. So we would really like to, during our Q&A session, would like to hear uh, they are like contradicting each other. How do we really balance that? Okay, so we'll come back to that. In the meantime, let's move ahead with our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Romang Shukla. Sir, I welcome you uh, for your uh, session now. Over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's nice to be there, uh, to be here, and I think to be part of this uh, panel where uh, we are having representation from across three countries. So uh, to start with, uh, sharing about my experience that I have uh, is in, in two industries specifically, and one industry is agnostic of any industry that we can talk about. Uh, so I, I started my career in an automotive uh, startup, uh, in, after sales car serving startup named Cat Pit Stop. I uh, learned a lot about uh, automotive sector there and also understood how intricacies of the supply chain of the entire automotive sector works. Uh, post that, uh, from four and a half years, been running this startup named uh, adjustify.com. Uh, so we, we have been focused on improving the entire uh, logistics landscape uh, across India. Uh, mapping all the all the existing stakeholders within this uh, sector and and try to map it with the various industries be it automotive or agricultural sector per se so in in the past four and a half years we have onboarded uh, we have a network of 52000 warehouses across india uh, empowering uh, across industry agnostic uh, players across the country uh, to serve their customer as well as save time as well as have better services for themselves and their consumers as well. In, in this entire journey, what, what I have realized and what we as an organization have realized, uh, there are various components. Let's say if we talk about agriculture sector, there are two components to it. It is the pre-harvest and then there is the post-harvest situation, right? In pre-harvest, there, there are a lot of startups who are trying to actually uh, who are tr actually trying to execute uh, a, a lot of AI solutions in terms of uh, uh, weather forecasting, forecasting on the basis of, let's say, which in which area and on the basis of soil, which which uh, uh, products can be grown there, and and on the basis of that, taking all those calls in terms of suggesting and and providing those solution to these farmers uh, so that they can have better life as well as I think uh, a lot of our panelists have talked about how meager the income of our Indian farmers are. And that's what our Indian government has been focused, uh, Mr. Dalvi was talking about in terms of uh, doubling the uh, income of our farmers. So in this entire journey, in these two aspects, I think uh, if you guys know about vertical farming, uh, there are a lot of startups globally as well as in India who have started, uh, uh, who have started putting up a lot of uh, crops within the warehouses in, in a very artificial environment where even nutrition is controlled by the systems using AI. Uh, at what stage of the growth of the product uh, of the crop, which nutrition has to be provided on the basis of that, a specific solution is 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 given to the uh, is given to the crops. So this shows that uh, that implementation of AI is very easily possible, and it, it can improve uh, even the production, even uh, the harvest, post harvest quality of product, and everything. 
depending if everything is connected, I think, and which Mr. Dalvi also talked about in terms of the gap in terms of data that we have. Uh, uh, there is data, but it is entirely in silos and there is no actual uh, common platform where from where it can be managed. So I think uh, as we keep on improving as as new and new com new new and new startups and governments will cap I hope will keep on uh, collaborating with these startups as well as new technologies which are coming in and standardizing entire processes even how the data has to be managed across central government even uh, at district level not only uh, for the state governments as well even you can go up to uh, tehsil level as well even to the gram panchayat level because the digitization has to happen at every level. And once the data, there's a single system of data, which is there on the basis of that, a lot of uh, insights can be drawn and, and it can help a lot of people, a uh, lot of farmers in terms of improving their lifestyle as well. So uh, just to uh, conclude from my perspective, I think uh, vertical farming has already proven that uh, what AI can bring in and what how it can improve uh, harvest as well as uh, income as well as the nutrition value of the uh, crops which are grown uh, i think if over the period of next four to five years we are going to see a lot of new age uh, uh, new age companies coming in and and supporting these farmers in it and talking about what justify does we as an organization has focused uh, uh, we help our customers we help all these retail who are in the in the segment of uh, agriculture like ninja cart and players like those in terms of finalizing the right facility closer to the farmers uh, so that as, as there is a lot of data which presents that around 20 percent of india's uh, uh, leafy vegetables fruits fresh produce are actually uh, wasted a lot so it, it, it's a huge amount if we talk in terms of uh, revenues as well as of what uh, what farmers are losing on so we are we as an organization have committed ourselves to create a network of infrastructure across india so that we can help all all the partners ranging from farmers to these retailers uh, who are selling it to the consumers uh, have a, a network of entire infrastructure entire logistic infrastructure on a digital platform from where they can control the movement of products and ensure uh, least amount of wastage as possible so thanks a lot guys uh, i hope uh, uh, We'll, we'll discuss a lot more in the Q&A session. Thank you, Mr. Shukla. That was really interesting, especially the uh, startups uh, idea where the startups are, are getting into a lot of uh, farming uh, technologies and the vertical farming and lots of these AI technologies and tools being adopted there. So maybe you could share some of your learnings or challenges that you face while you go ahead with these uh, technologies to be adopted in the real scenario. So during Q&A, we'll come back to that. So let's move on to our next speaker. Uh, Mr. Belmont from Brazil. Uh, sir, I would like to invite you for your keynotes. Hi, so can I share my uh, presentation with you guys? Yeah, sure, but uh, we will uh, manage to finish it in five minutes, I hope. Yes, okay, okay. can be. Is, is, is yeah, too, too, too fast, okay? Uh, let's go. Is that okay? Can you watch my screen? Absolutely. OK, so let's go. So guys, first of all, uh, I guess that Mr. Ashoka and Ms. Regina will be happy because to the practice. So the global agriculture business, we know that is around $20 trillion. And Brazil, uh, $1.4 trillion. Real. What we are doing here? We are getting artificial intelligence and applying for around 250 producers in FAENG. FAENG is an organization with produ pro producers here in Brazil. So exportations in 2019, 38, 7 billion real. And what we are doing, we are facing that kind of challenges. We have here doing, we are facing that kind of challenges. We have here in Brazil the problems around no cultivation guarantees in the supply specification, false labeling, and the main intermediaries that reduce the farmer's gain. You can see a tractor picture in the side. Why? Because Bitracer connects everything that has happened in the field, in the farmers, 
and we make sense to this data with AI. But it's not only that, you know, for example, if you have the kind of equipment on the field and you need to know how is going the environment, we get all this data. For what? For to ensure security, reliability, and, tra and transparency in just a few clicks. This is the face of our products. Once you have your production using our AI software layer, you have a white label application that show everything what, what's happening in your process. It's not only guarantee of the quality, but shake hands with the customer in the next level using also blockchain. And why blockchain? Because you know the LGPD, and this is the key point that I appreciate the talk of Mr. Ashoka, that he told that the producers must to have an enterprise and a corporate uh, way of work because this chance to use technology is not inclusive. This is exclusive one. So Brazil, India, Israel, we must to run to apply technology in a sensitive way to give the real value to a small one and the medium one guys. Because if you want to shake hands with an SAP, Microsoft guys, consultant guys, this is not uh, cheap. It takes too much money. What Bitrace is doing is give cheap technology, fast technology in a global grade. And this is a kind uh, of our product. Nestle is already using, you know, everything what's helping. This, is a, this example is cafe culture. Our business model and some customers here in Brazil are part of our team and some partners we have also here in Brazil. I'm talking a bit fast, guys, uh, just only because I want to show you all that we are applying in the real world AI with blockchain and we have results on the table. So again, uh, the, the, another quite important thing is that this software you saw, we are writing together with Mr. Santosh. So Santosh, if you, you and Apidup team are watching this speech, many thanks. Apidup is an Indian company. We shake hands, sharing technology with, with Indian guy. So this is not a dream, my friends. So it's a honor to be in talk to you. We are applying, having great results with AI and blockchain. So again, thanks, Mr. Ashoka, for your initial talks. This open all, all minds for we to be hurry, run, to apply, because we are not only uh, helping producers, we are saving lives. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Belmont. Thank you. Uh, I do have a question regarding uh, automobile, your technology in automobile, especially Mercedes Benz, where how they have adopted it. We will get on to the Q&A session while I was reading through the entire profile that turned out to be very interesting. So we'll hear that more from you in Q&A. Moving on to our next speaker, which is our final speaker from the panel today. Um, just before our Q&A session, uh, Mr. Kostuk Dhande, uh, so over to you for your keynotes. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you. Share your slides, uh, Kostuk. Yes, I'm sharing the slides, yeah. Yes, so hello everyone. My name is Kausuk Dhonde. I'm the founder and CEO of Autonix Automation Private Limited. We are a, a company based in Mumbai, India. Uh, we are primarily focusing on off-road automation technology. Our, uh, uh, we are using a tractor as a product uh, to showcase the uh, technologies that we're working on. Uh, and uh, currently, we have already developed uh, multiple prototypes for this particular product. And uh, we are about to go to the market in the next year. Uh, so just to give you an idea about our product, uh, this is a short video of our uh, product. The automation that we are showing in the book. Thank <laughs> you. 
that was a completely driverless uh, tractor that we have currently developed. Uh, just to give you a background on why we started working on this, uh, uh, we actually uh, saw uh, lived with the farmers and to understand the ground level problems. And uh, we've seen there are a lot of operational expenses that they are uh, going through uh, while using a diesel uh, tractor in India and across the world. And these machines are very inefficient in terms of uh, uh, you know use cases of uh, different use cases that they are uh, belonging to. And uh, as far as uh, uh, you know, different applications are concerned, farmers are involved in a lot of redundant activities, which are also causing a lot of health hazards to them. So we are trying to eliminate uh, these things by making it 100% electric as well as uh, autonomous. Uh, we are actually this is a de design that we actually built uh, to, in, back in 2017, and currently we are about to go to the market uh, with the new one. This is how it works. A farmer has to take the tractor on the farm and drive it on the boundary only one time. Once the boundary is set, uh, the uh, tractor will start automatically and it will perform the job and it will inform the farmer that the job is done. So meanwhile, the uh, farmer is free to do all his complementary businesses that he's involved into, like milk production, poultry production, etc. This gives extra income uh, for the farmer as well while getting the job done on the farms. So this is a pyramid actually just shows why this will work uh, across the world. Uh, you can see only 18 farmers, 18% uh, of farmers are there who own more than five acres of land. And for them, it makes sense to own a tractor. And uh, for the small and marginal farmers, it makes more sense to take it on uh, rent. The primary target will be uh, uh, both these through leasing and direct sale. Uh, there are, there's a huge demand in also transportation activities. We've seen uh, tractors being used to at airports to carry luggage carts. So we can actually automate those as well uh, and uh, get a better output. Almost 96% of accidents that happen uh, are because of human error. So uh, eliminating the human completely will actually solve uh, this uh, issue as well. So as far as production is concerned, uh, you know, almost 20,000 rupees is spent just for the rice cultivation on a per acre uh, plot. Uh, we can actually bring it down to almost five to 7,000 rupees uh, using electric uh, autonomous tractor. And we have worked with the farmers uh, since the last uh, two to three years, and we've seen a lot of uh, uh, you know a good good response from all of across the world. And uh, we are here uh, to collaborate with uh, fellow panelists to you know build this product and get into the market as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, so overall uh, incomes are also uh, getting uh, uh, increased, and uh, the expenses are getting uh, lower uh, through this product. And AI obviously will bridge the gap between poor and uh, the rich. Uh, down the line. And that is what we are working on with this particular product. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kostal. Thank you, uh, Mr. Donde. Uh, that was interesting. Yes. Uh, how are these tractors being adopted in the farmer community? That would be interesting to know from you. Um, we'll move on to that. So uh, with this, we uh, close our panel uh, session, this keynote session, and we'll move on to the Q&A. Um, can we have all the panelists on the screen, uh, Shabini, Jaya? Yes, sure. We have everyone on the screen, actually. Okay, okay. So, Shabini, can we have everyone on the screen? Uh, with yeah, the with... Okay, so, uh, uh, can we yeah. get it? Can we get yeah, everyone on the screen? Can we get started with our Q&A session? Sure. Okay. So, um, Mr. Ashok Dalvai, sir, if you are still there. Uh, yes, I would, he's there, ma'am. I, I would like to start a question with you. <laughs> two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir, there are two parts to it um, uh, coming from the audience as well as one that uh, is more from the solution provider side. You mentioned about the smart agriculture, basically the science based, the data driven. So that's a smart agriculture. So how do the AI solution provider partner in this initiative with the government? When would the policies come up? When would they get more insights into uh, they start pitching for especially the startups? Because that would be it would be a great uh, start for them to get some exposure on the initiatives and the actual areas that the government is planning to get into. And the second part of the question is uh, coming from the audience is on how can the farmers in the remote villages adopt the AI, this, these technologies and these initiatives of the government to actually uh, become more uh, technology oriented uh, production that they would want to go with. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, see, so far as government is concerned, 
I think it will be concerned more with the policies, right? So what is our policy drive today? First is to build a centralized database of the farmers. So we are now building an agri stack based on the different databases that we had related to soil health card, the land records, and various other things. We are now centralizing all that so that at one point of at one place you have all the data. Second is to now connect the land records with this farmer's database because land is a basic asset. Now, third one, of course, would be to have a policy where an open source and accessibility is given to everybody. So we are yet to adopt that policy. The biggest challenge that I know to all the private players is to access the data because government, in a sense, is the repository of all the data, you know, most of the data. So once we adopt that open policy, then I think it will be a big incentive for, by, for the private players to actually develop their app applications, and, you know, et cetera. So that will be the first thing. Second one is we are promoting, of course, the startups. You know, we have been holding large number of challenges and inviting people to participate in those, selecting a few of them and then funding them. So naturally, you should uh, people should be looking forward to these opportunities as and when the ministry calls for uh, such challenges, they should participate and then uh, take uh, advantage of the support that is coming. Third one, as you know, that under the Atmanirbhar Bharat, which was adopted by government last year, we are now supporting large number of post-harvest management initiatives. For example, promoting farmer producers organizations, building agri-logistics, where we have created a corpus fund called Agriculture Infrastructure Fund. The companies or the startups are entitled to take loan up to rupees two crore under that at concessional rate of interest. So you now, we, as we see, the environment policy, the policy environment is actually coming into place or a, partly it has come into place so people should be able to take advantage of these things. And then, of course, technology is developed by a large number of ICR institutions, various government institutions. We are not commercializing them. So many of them need not have to sometimes invent their own uh, technology. They may also like to use the technology that is available. So whether we can have a PPP mo model of you know, R&D, uh, et cetera, Yes, that also some things are happening already, but I know that there's much more need, needed to be done. But oh, by and large, I can say that there is much more progress today than what was there earlier. And uh, people should be able to take advantage. So the biggest thing is about data and we will be able to give you the data. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, let me uh, go ahead. I have taken some notes, some points. So I will just go ahead and uh, have uh, at least try to ask one question to each of the panelists so that we get further what they have discussed, a uh, further more elaboration on uh, some of their thoughts that they had shared. Uh, Colonel Singh, uh, sir, uh, if I we could have you here. And uh, question for you is that, uh, what's been the trend so far of AI in the MSM, MSME sector? And how do you think this can be accelerated further? Sir, you are on mute. Yeah, wonderful. So, you know, uh, as we go with the MSME sector and there's an impetus by the government of India itself for the AI, they came up with the policy draft paper, <laughs> the vision document which is already there uh, for the AI in different sectors altogether, whether it's automotive, uh, agriculture, your education, your healthcare, you know, and uh, they've really made a focus of all these sectors, how you really work out on the AI. And uh, in times to come, I'm seeing a lot of traction, which is happening as we got the AI in the smaller companies, we have, they're falling from the HR process, they're trying to get into the AI to the other processes which are there, you know, getting into the AI part. So there are lots of things uh, which are happening right now. And I'm, I'm very sure, you know, like I was telling you that AI is not that it's, uh, you know, it's all end of a game. It's the start of the, uh, the complete uh, journey right now. So uh, we are going to see another 20, 25 years when the AI is full blown. So uh, there's a lot of impetus 
from the MSME, and that's the most driving factor for the AI's growth in India in particular. And uh, that will be a, a big, you know, game changer in times to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So my next question is to Mr. Nata. Uh, Ma'am, you mentioned about your organization being uh, completely into data, the data intelligence part of it. I'm sure you have had a lot of success integrating AI uh, with all the data that you have captured. Would you uh, share some of the learnings, the challenges and learnings during this process so that when uh, Ashok Dalwai sir mentioned about the data collection is a major challenge right now, that's the starting point. So, uh, you know, some of these learnings that could help us also and help some of the people who are trying to gather data at this stage. Well, oh, all right. I, I, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, the, the greatest challenge is um, if, uh, uh, mostly if you think in small farmer, small business, would be the data extraction because of uh, technological structure. But when you, we think in, in bigger companies, for example, I know that India in Brazil have something common when we think about cooperative uh, business, co cooperative, cooperative farmers in business. Uh, when we have this co cooperative uh, work, we have more structure, so we have data to work on. <laughs> when we have this data, uh, we can apply our solutions of integration, um, thinking about the, the integrations of these different uh, agents in the production chain and the supply chain. Uh, so we can bring valid information, we can or work on those data and provide insights, provide uh, predictions that could help um, all those agents. Thank you. Thank you. So a follow up on the same data part is uh, for Ms. Uh, Arsira from Israel. Uh, Ma'am, uh, question to you is since you uh, mentioned about the smallhold farmers, the context is smallhold farmers and in India, we have a huge base of smallhold farmers and data is a challenge. How do we do that? So any suggestions, any insights that you would want to share on actually managing this entire thing uh, for, from, an, from a data and from a deploying AI for the smallhold farmers? Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, first, I think I'll address a bit on the data acquisition part. Uh, in fact, Israel also has a lot of small farms. Of course, it's not the classic smallholder farmers, right? These are fairly sophisticated, even though individually they are small farms. I think the model that Israel to some degree has managed to do very well is the farmers themselves are fairly organized. So uh, similar to, I think, uh, Ms. Uh, Renata before me said, they're fairly organized, they come together and they said, okay, this is a community of 2000 farmers, actually all of them grow different crops, but I'm going to designate, you know, uh, five people to be data collectors and they're gonna go in a very structured way. They're gonna be fairly scientific about it. And they do that repeatedly, uh, day in, day out. You know, they have uh, done a very good job on pest monitoring, for example, where in the, we are able to collect a lot of good pest data in a structured way and uh, uh, detect patterns and generate alerts and things like that on the system. So I think one way to do that is precisely to be organized with the way you set up data protocols, with the way you want to deploy your field operations to collect and make use of data. Do that over time and that would set you up in a pretty good place with a structured, uh, both spa spatial and temporal, you know, in agriculture, you need both time and space to be organized and that set you up well to do further analytics later on. And that forms the fundamental of machine learning and AI. Thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 
uh, we are running short of time, but I still do have a couple of questions. I don't know whether I'll be able to make it or not, but let me just get started. Mr. Mishra, over to you. Uh, you had mentioned about the regional differentiation of the entire the products that you have done it. How do you actually do with your entire solution? How do you customize it for different regions, the same application, the same thing, but you know, the, the product, the producers are different from different regions. So just quickly, if you can give that input so that I can move to some other panelists also, but we do want to hear this from you. Also, you could give us some examples of comparison between fruits and vegetables because they have different levels of perishability. So that'll be great for all of us. Sure. So uh, uh, coming on to the variety, variety aspect, which we have uh, solved for uh, uh, multiple commodities. Uh, what we have seen is that uh, we start off uh, at a particular region in a particular country. And then we first grow in, uh, we collect more data from different regions of the country, depending upon the goal we want to achieve. Uh, accordingly, we create a lot of synthesized data from our side, which can be leveraged for other countries as well. So we collect images from other countries and see if that limited amount of data can be linearly or exponentially expanded to collect the uh, digitized information in a, uh, in a, uh, in an artificial way. So we generate artificially images of different varieties once we get it from uh, Google or from some other search engine. If you want to, for example, if we have developed a model for Apple variety in India, for US, we'll go through certain Google images and then start generating artificial images to move faster and ensure that before even we collect the real data, we can he get help from the synthesized data. That is what... Sorry, so, sorry to yeah. interrupt. So even with the producers that have got some GI uh, status marked, you know, so you would go accordingly, right? Because like, let's take if it is a Ratnagiri mango, uh, if it is uh, somewhere the lychee from a special place, you know, so you would go with that GI status as well. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Just to add, I guess one question was on the perishability. So there are proxies for our perishability, uh, which we use. Sometimes it's the color of the produce. Sometimes it's the softness of the produce for which you require different cameras, not only the RGB cameras, but there are uh, IR cameras and hyperspectral cameras, which give you internal information and the perishability information of the respective produce. But these are a bit costly cameras and specific retailers require uh, for finding out the actual perishability. Otherwise, we use proxies like color or uh, other properties uh, to identify the perishability. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to uh, have a question for uh, Dr. Regeni, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, we know that uh, India is very keen on collaborating with Brazil in many of the areas and technology is one of the domain. So uh, with focus on AI, um, if you could please share some of the views on how India and Brazil can work together. Sure. We have inside the university four projects. Uh, so we can work in ag agriculture, we can work in computer vision and apply this for many places inside the smart cities. It will be a pleasure to work with all of you. We have many initiatives with the computer vision, AI, IoT, and for a smaller agriculture sector. So if you want, we are open to collaborate. Okay, thank you, thank you, ma'am. I think these uh, four projects, maybe, uh, Jaya, we could have some detail on these four projects and we could uh, share it with our uh, members and uh, our audiences for today's uh, conference webinar so that they get more visibility and more insight into it. Absolutely, ma'am. We'll thank keep so the conversation much. going and we'll be in touch with you again and take things forward. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Question, do we have time for more questions, Jaya? I do. Um, Ma'am, we, we, we can uh, uh, move forward. It's fine. I think the audience is very uh, much committed and niche. So we must uh, continue. So, uh, it's fine. For, but we will keep it uh, fast. Yes, I'll, I'll keep it short and I would expect the responses also uh, quick and short. So, Mr. Rana, I go back to your uh, point on SAP. Uh, how do you think SAP has helped in maximizing agricultural output? and uh, adopting of AI 
uh, is there going to be a challenge for the value chain members? What do you think about it? Uh, uh, yeah, very, uh, Ms. Neetu, very good question. Uh, I think um, SLCM um, as a group, we are approaching every community gradually. As all of us have said, that AI cannot exist without other technologies. So SAP implementation was part of that. And we went ahead and gave our own BRD because the SAP didn't have the BRD. So we had to build the BRD uh, along with the SAP technicians and build uh, the entire platform to manage uh, more than 7,000 warehouses uh, across Pan India to have a single source of truth on inventory and commodity value. Having said so, uh, 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 you know, uh, AI is extremely important, but there are very critical constraints. One is, of course, the big data, which is not as an input, but also once you, you collect the data, how do you process that, right? So, for example, we are working on this mobile app, Quality Check app, to assess the quality of the, of the food grains across the value chain so that the price discovery can be done. And the traceability can also help each value chain member to, to be sure of what kind of food and grains they are consuming, right? Now, I, I got 15,000 images done. These are agnostic of light, handsets, warehousing conditions, open Monday conditions, and uh, uh, plus also the user, right? Uh, so how he's taking the images, whether he's taking from a high degree or low degree and all, there are so many variants included in this. So we, we need to collect huge amount of data to train and teach the machine. That's one. Number two is once you receive it, how do you process it, right? Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, that also requires a huge amount of investment. Uh, so, so data collection and of course the processing of data is, is, a, is a serious constraint. Number two is um, what I, I believe is uh, the investment part. Uh, if you look at a global pattern as of now to make the AI affordable, uh, in the European countries, the investment is happening 50-50, which means 50% investment is happening in farm to market segment and 50% investment is happening in market to folk segment. However, if you look at the India uh, trend and pattern as of now, only 20 to 25% of the total agri investment is happening in farm management segment, where AI is going to play a huge role. So uh, we need more investments uh, you know, in this uh, segment to ensure that AI can become more affordable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Michelle, I have a question for you. This is regarding your um, presentation on the driverless and automated cars. And one side we are talking about when would this technology be on road? And the other side we are talking about what is going to happen to the safety, to the environment. So are we not conflicting, contradicting the two things? So what is your thought on that? Um, Self-driving cars rely on AI, and uh, as we see, even with extraordinary amounts of time and money and efforts, um, we are not there yet. The human uh, intelligence is much more uh, complex than we can imagine, and trying to duplicate it in an AI framework is very, very challenging. So um, I believe that uh, self-driving cars are a year closer than a year ago, yet it's hard to predict when will they actually arrive. As for safety, um, it is very important. It's actually the most important component in this entire uh, vision. Um, it's not just about getting from uh, origin to destination. It's making sure that also the passengers arrive safely, but also all the other road users are not badly affected by an autonomous vehicle passing by. Today, it's relatively easy because we can uh, recognize these vehicles with all the cameras and sensors and the signs on them. So everyone moves around and uh, clears the way for them. But in a real environment, when there are many vehicles and all vehicles are autonomous, that's where the challenge will be. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Okay, um, I have another in the automobile sector from uh, Mr. Belmont uh, from Brazil. Uh, sir, you mentioned a lot about uh, how it, both in the agriculture and the uh, automobile sector, uh, we would really be interested to know um, how Mercedes-Benz has adopted your AI solutions something that would be really interesting where uh, your organization has given the AI solution and technology to Merck. Right, Nitu. So great question. Uh, of course, we have some details that are protected uh, under NDA. Mm -hmm. So, but you can be sure 
We are together rewriting the trucks. We are applying much more AI technology with blockchain that, for example, uh, you have a kind of certificate of driving. Guess what? Uh, Im imagine the federal government of any country watching the quality of driver around the country. So we can reduce deaths in the, in the state uh, roads, you know, for the quality of drivers. So we are putting intelligence is, is a kind of a step back of uh, self-driving cars. We are, get, we, we are making a step ahead, but, but going through the step uh, where everybody can use the technology, you know, we cannot expend a lot of money to uh, release all autonomous data. We are get that, that we are bring this technology for today's moment. So that's the case of Mercedes Benz. But you know, Harman is a huge also uh, case because we are transforming. Uh, in, in the end of the next year, we will achieve. 30,000 cars from factory with digital wallet. Imagine when you purchase a car, you do not need to ask for a price off because your drive behavior with AI already, say, you can say that need to is a good driver. You don't need to, to expense more for your new car model. Yourself, your drive behavior tells that you take care of the, of the safety on the track. That's the kind of product that we are launching with Harman also. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. In the interest of time, I would like to just go with one more question. And we do have a couple of questions from the audience as well. And I'll see, Jaya, how we can get these answered from our panelists and share with the audiences uh, later offline. Uh, but uh, just one quick question to Mr. Kostub Dhande. Uh, sir, your startup indeed is energetic. You're talking of a complete automated uh, tractor system, tra tractor, and that too being adopted in villages and by the farmers. How are the farmers community ready to accept it? What is what are your What are the challenges to take it to the market, take it to the field? Uh, can you share some of these with us? Sure, sure. sure. So back in 2017, when we built our first prototype and we showed to a few of the farmers, they were quite surprised, you know, by seeing a tractor driving without a driver. Uh, they thought it mean it's always running. I mean, it's magic or something like that. So when we told them exactly how we are doing it and we let them use our application, uh, we saw, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a big smile on their faces and they really uh, have, since they really have this issue of uh, dependency on drivers, especially in the peak seasons when the monsoon season sets in in the country. Uh, you know, you, do, you can't find right drivers to get the job done and prepare your crop. So that is actually something that uh, gave them a sense of freedom or independence to, uh, you know, just book a, uh, uh, you know, tractor and get the job done, just like we book Uber and Ola uh, here in uh, urban areas. And we've seen a trend of a lot of people moving away from uh, rural areas to urban areas for smarter jobs. Uh, since uh, because of that, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, heavy duty activities are uh, something that are done by, you know, very few uh, number of population. So this automation is something that will uh, and is bringing a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, difference, uh, creating a lot of difference in their lives. Uh, and we believe AI is something that uh, uh, you know learns uh, uh, gradually. Uh, the more number of tractors are being deployed, the better they will perform. The better output uh, we'll get from the farming community. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do have many questions, and I have questions from audience also. But I'm so sorry. Oh. We run out of time and we could not address all these questions at this point in time uh, but definitely we will have them offline uh, and we'll share with uh, everyone uh, jaya over to you for the end of your remarks sure so ma'am we will uh, we will to all the panelists uh, we are really grateful for your time and we have as ma'am said a whole lot of questions and uh, we will be coming back to you and uh, sharing with you the questions and creating an environment of further dialogue and communication and we shall keep this communication going. Uh, we had our vice chairman uh, uh, with us, but uh, he had to log out. Uh, he just uh, shared with me, but um, I have uh, his speech that he has sent to me and I'm gonna uh, share the word of thanks on his behalf, uh, uh, which is that uh, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the panelists from India, Brazil and Israel for a very interesting and informative session on emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, transformation in digital in automobiles and agricultural sector. I'm sure the perspective shared here today with all of us will enable us to build on the huge opportunities that artificial intelligence as a tool is offering to industries and businesses. 
and various companies and leaders. Early adoption of smart technology such as AI has been credited with enabling companies in these rapidly evolving business environments to transform themselves digitally. As we all know, data is the new oil. Time and energy of analysts may be spent judiciously now if simple algorithms will be put in place faster. Today we have heard our various esteemed panelists share various examples on how they have made a big difference to various businesses where AI is making a difference. So uh, now I would like to request Ashok sir, I think if he's here to uh, uh, put in the last words. Uh, Ashok sir, over to you. Sharvani? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Jayat. Uh, uh, thank you also for the partiality that you're showing me to <laughs> give more time. I won't add anything more except to say that it was educative for me. Uh, learning is a continuous experience and artificial intelligence and other actors under the package of digital technology uh, are all in a way emerging. They're still, as they called, emerging technologies. So there's really no full stop anywhere near the site. But I guess that uh, we're all open to these technologies across the domain, it's not just agriculture, in every segment of our economy, as also outside the economy, the society. So in, from that perspective, I think I was exposed to uh, the entrepreneurs who are actually soiling their hands and engaging their minds with this uh, baby called artificial intelligence. And from across the globe, including Brazil and Israel, we have learned uh, and I, I was mighty impressed to, uh, to actually be exposed to that and learn from them. And I would like to assure that government of India and also the state governments within the union are all committed to digital technology. And agriculture in particular has come back as a central piece of the actor after the COVID experience and also in the context of climate change, agriculture is going to be the future of economy through the bioeconomy. So agriculture will be producing not just food products, but also non-food products, which will serve as a raw materials for driving the bioeconomy. And in, with the combination of bioprocessing, bioengineering, and biotechnology and information technology, the focus in future would be biomaterials, bioenzymes, biochemicals, and all these things are going to lay the foundation of a new industrial sector. Uh, it's not just in India, but across the globe, we can see those new uh, the seedlings emerging, and which only goes to show that agriculture will remain a very important uh, phase of economy in the 21st century everywhere. And therefore, adopting digital technology, new science, so that we economize on the use of land, economize on the use of water, economize and the use of various other kinds of nutrients uh, has become extremely important. And therefore, we look forward to a new bouquet of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, combined with, of course, sensors, in internet of things, geospatial technology, the whole bouquet, I think, assumes a lot of importance. And I would li just like to close by saying that uh, we must keep, keep in mind the needs of the poor people the people who are outside the formal economy. In fact, digital economy, uh, digital technology has that capacity to rupture this isolation that has happened to vis-a-vis uh, -vis the large number of people who are not part of the formal economy. I think this is secular to that extent, universal to that extent, that it can actually uh, transcend the barriers of roads and transportation, valleys and mountains and reach out to people. So how do we strengthen this new tech infrastructure of bandwidth, this now the accessibility of the smartphones, network, and of course, literacy and capacity building. So if we can actually focus on this, I guess uh, we'll be able to create more jobs, add more value, save on resources uh, on this little planet called Earth, and then uh, help other segments of the economy. So thank you very much, Madam, and uh, thank you, Briggs, for giving you, me sir. and all of you this opportunity. Uh, thank good you, day sir. to everybody and uh, good night. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we would like to, with this, thank uh, all our esteemed panelists as well. Uh, and Ashok Talwai, sir, has uh, concluded everything very, very well for us. 
So I would thank uh, Colonel Injadjit Singh, Ms. Renato Limuro, Ms. Arsia Thrupati, Mr. Nishan Mishra, Professor Dr. Rigane Relva Romano, Mr. Rakesh Kumar Rana, Ms. Michelle Spector, Mr. Omang Shukla, Mr. Expedito Belmont, Mr. Costa Dhonde, for your time and for your insightful presentations. BRICS Chamber of Commerce and Industries will make this into an annual event and regularly bring stakeholders from value chain within the segment on platforms like this one to discuss, debate, collaborate with ideas and innovative solutions. Thank you everybody once again and wish you a very great evening. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.